filled and very popular show, and I know you guys are gonna enjoy it. Um, so how many of us have been here before? Or not been here before, rather? Who's not been here? Okay. Um, <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, so what this place is, is an opportunity for us to create uh, our dreams. So if you want to, artistically, maybe beyond to, but um, if you want to paint and you want to try sculpting, we have, we'll have a great uh, sculptor yard uh, by spring out, out on the side here. It's going to look awesome. Um, if you want to uh, create poetry or uh, write novels or have them perform or mix of all, all of that together, this is definitely the place for you. Um, this is, uh, and here is called Alley's Alley and uh, we want your stories, whatever your stories are. Um, if your family has a great story, everybody has a great coming to America story from their family somewhere or another. Um, or uh, or what, what is it like to live here? What's it like to live in Reno? What's it like to live today? Um, what happened to us? We would love, love, love these stories. Uh, we think Reno is chocked full of just creative wonderfulness and there's no reason that we can't be like Chicago or uh, in off-Broadway New York. Um, uh, with what we're producing here. We can make new stuff here. Let's make new stuff. It's, it's, yeah. it's time. There we go. Okay, good. <laughs> Do it. Um, so bring your stuff in. We're, we're here today though because we, we love Derek Miller and Bob Ross. Let's yeah. give a happy <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bob Ross. Um, written, directed, and produced by the guy. Uh, he's incredible. We're very lucky to have been hanging out with him for almost six years now. Making so much weird stuff. We're gonna we're gonna actually film a food fight after after this in here for a film, and you all are more than welcome to get in on that food fight for real. You can totally stay, and, and you'll be in a movie, and you can throw some food. That's fun. Um, so um, we got Dubs Albrecht playing every other character in this. Uh, he's uh, he's part of the Potentialist crew, and let's clap for him. Cause he's <laughs> Thank you very much for all your hard work. Um, so if we go to this corner right here, we're gonna to go to about 1979, Alaska. Uh, we're gonna see a young Bob Ross <laughs> and uh, his rise to uh, stardom on PBS. So uh, let's give a, another happy little clap for a happy accident. The Bob Ross experience. Oh, hey, I didn't, uh, didn't see all that. If you need a drink or something, just holler. Bill over here painting. Let's see, come on, Bill. Teach me this magic. I need to get paid for this. I cannot keep being a bartender. I'm tired of this military gig as well. What? I know I can do it. I just can't figure out what the little things are. All the little ones, all the little parts, all the little stuff. <laughs> Getting so goddamn frustrated that I just lose my mind. You know, I wish Bill was here. He could, maybe if he were here in person. I just can't learn a thing through the television. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> Bill! <laughs> Bill Alexander? That's just my name. Well, I don't know what to say. Where the hell do you come from? Oh, you know, from this and there. What are you doing there? <laughs> well, I've been painting these gold pans and trying to sell them here and there. With oh. People that come into the bar, but not having a good, not having a good go of it. Oh, no, you're clearly not using my method. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's exactly what I've been trying to do. That's all I've been doing. Let me see, let me see. Oh, no, this is terrible. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. Well, it's not terrible. I mean, what's wrong with it? Uh, there's the mist on the mountains. Where's the magic? I didn't want to have any mist on the mountains. I didn't want to have any magic in Look, look here. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the deal with that brush? <laughs> oh, it's this brush. How did you do that? Well, 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 it's, it's, it's the almighty brush. Hey, I got an idea. Let's say I come and work for you. And I'll teach your lessons and I'll learn your technique. And that way we can together make some almighty painters and some almighty paintings. Mm, I don't know, Bob. I don't know. Come on, I'll do everything you say. I'll, I'll, I'll paint right to the letter exactly what you tell me. Do you think you can use this almighty brush? Yeah, give it to me. I can use it. Uh, hold on. <laughs> this 
sing about the almighty brush is that there can only be almighty in the right hand. Yeah, maybe I've got the right hands. I just need to learn how to use it correctly. <laughs> I think you need to learn how to relax. What do you mean, relax? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm kind of high energy guy. Really? Yeah, I mean, all I do is yell all day. I tell these cadets what to do and what not to do. No, no, no. See, this is not where the magic happens. The magic happens when you allow it to happen. So, I just gotta relax, you say? You just have to relax. <laughs> all right, yeah, I can, I can get with that. I can feel that. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, there, that's better. I feel better already. Yes, you look better too. <laughs> Shoot, I tell you what. Why don't you give me that brush? And uh, we'll get started. Let's do it, Bob Ross. Yeah. You're not going to regret this. I know I won't. Let's learn how to paint. <laughs> <laughs> Standard 18 by 24. It's a one inch canvas. You can paint on whatever you want. You want to, you have an old car door, you got a fridge. You can paint on the wall. Shoot, you can paint on the floor. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> All that matters is you have a good time here, and that's what we're going to do. I had to find uh, maybe a mountain scene, some bushes, some trees. You know how. You know. At this point, I hope you feel free to drag out some old paints, canvas. Feel free to paint along with it. If not, just go ahead and pull up your easy chair and relax. We're going to have a good time right now. So, got that there? I'm just going to load. Yeah, right down here. There we go. I'm just going to load the tip of this big old two inch brush like that. I've got my phthalo blue here. Just a little bit of pigment will go a long way with that phthalo blue. I'm going to come up here, just start crisscrossing, and start laying in a half of the sky. It's a nice little sky. Yeah, feel free to push it in there. You're not going to hurt that canvas. You know, sometimes force it into that warp and weft. It's like scrubbing its hair. You've got to clean it up like you love it. Get ready to really love it. And we just keep coming across. And as we come down, we want it to get a little lighter. To create the illusion of a far away horizon, things tend to get a little lighter as they recede away from you. That'll, that'll help give you a nice illusion that you're going for. Go ahead and 
You'd get a little more pain if you needed. You already knew that. I didn't have to tell you. Sometimes I think it's too easy to overthink things. You just got to step back sometimes. Trust yourself. You can do it. I know you can do it. There we go. We're just going to yeah, fill that in. This will be a water scene in the future, so we want it to reflect the sky down there. Over here, it's not going to be water scene. So just fill that in with some dark, nice underbase.
Now we need to start figuring out how this mountain actually feels, what its contour is. So to do that, we just kind of decide on what the angle is of its flush, and we just start flushing it down. And there we can see where we're going to want to put our highlights and where our shadows are going to end up living. We can't all be highlights, you know, that's unrealistic. <laughs> highlights don't stand out unless there's something dark to create the contrast. You don't need to be afraid of the dark. There we go. It's also going to remove some of that paint down there when we want to add in some other stuff. So, go ahead and curl that down too. Let's say there's a nice little bank. A little baby mountain, really, is all it is. You consider it. We'll start underpainting that. We'll come around to it later. This is my favorite part. I like putting the snow on the mountain. She had grown up in Florida, didn't have much snow around. So that was 21 before I even saw snow. Can you believe that, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was aware of the concept of snow. I knew what snow was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, sometimes this PBS stuff is amateur. I mean, I'm mixed up, Jerry. Look what I did. I made a light green. I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. It's fine. Yeah, okay. Let's go. Let's roll. <clears throat> all right, welcome back. What we're going to do now is <laughs> create our snow. Just grab some of that white and pull it out nice and thin like that. Did you catch that, Jerry? Did you catch that? Well, I can't tell when you. <clears throat> I can't tell when you. <laughs> Let's just do it. I'm going to cut across like that. Got it. <laughs> Ever so slightly, just apply a little bit of pressure. Figure out where that first peak is going to live. Drop it in there. And then just ever so gently, pull it down, pull it down. No pressure at all. Grab another little log, do it again. You can just start to define, you can watch as it happens right before your eyes. You'll know what to do next. That's where you just have to trust yourself to make the initial mark. There. Let's see, let's start bringing it over this way. There. there. And we are not going to leave these guys out just because they're a little bit further back. They're catching just the last little bit of light there. We can give them a little bit. If you have a smaller knife, you can use that. If you don't have a knife, you could probably use your fingernail if it was long. <laughs> Might look like you're flipping off your painting of the red. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, no jokes. Yeah, bad jokes, you know. Jerry, you don't know that about me. It's okay. You can tell bad jokes if you want to. Again, just finding a couple more little pieces. Looking a little lonely back there, isn't it? Let's get a little bit higher peak. Yeah. There. Mm -hmm. Now, it's really starting to come around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as we discussed earlier, highlights aren't enough without a little bit of shadow. So we're going to grab that blue, add it to our snow color. Take it down a little bit with a little bit of that laser and crimson. Just a little bit goes a long way, Jerry. See that? You can whistle if you want to. <laughs> Shoot, I like to make up little stories. Sometimes people say I'm a little weird, but a lot of painters that I've met are a little weird. Some of the best people I've ever met, though. I swear that's probably my favorite part about doing all this. Meeting all the lovely people at these workshops, traveling around, being in that in that Winnebago. We have met a lot of people. And don't even start on me, Jerry, about me and Annette in Winnebago, okay? She's not my wife. She's <laughs> my business partner. It's a professional relationship. <laughs> oh, I don't like to talk about it either, Jerry. Let's just drop it. Why are you trying to talk to me while we're filming? <laughs> I know, Annette. I'm cool. <laughs> no, I don't need to take a break. Shoot, we still got seven more to do today. 
Can't even take a break because of Jared. <laughs> <laughs> Again, same technique as before. Look at a slightly different color. And on the other side of the hills. Just imagine that light hitting right on the back side. That snow is still bright enough to reflect the sky. That's why it appears a little bit. That's not magic. You already knew that, didn't you? A mm, little bit of that red peaks in every once in a while. That's a good thing. You can keep that. <laughs> We can leave some deeper crevices. That's good. If you don't want to, if you want to have a smoother mountain, that's fine. Just remove more of the ultimate dark in there and you'll have a smoother looking mountain. This one's very severe, very jagged edges. And uh, you know, if you don't want to paint a mountain in there, then just don't do it. <laughs> you don't have to. I just love mountains. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to grab that big old brush that's still had a little bit of mist on it. Bill Alexander once impressed upon me the importance of misting in the mountain. That little blur will give you a lot of depth all of a sudden, almost as if by magic. That's why he called it the magic of painting. Shoot, I worked for Bill for a couple of years. I was a pretty good magic painter. Then uh, when I met Annette, she convinced me to strike out on my own that I could probably do it, do everything he was doing, maybe even a little better. She was right. There you go, go ahead and beat the devil out of that thing. You don't want it, you want it dry. Yeah, dry, I told you she should have worn a raincoat. <laughs> took the other guy only one minute to see that what was about to happen with that. He'd seen the show before, Jerry. <laughs> and who hired this guy? Ned, seriously, sir. Oh, cool, cool, cool. <clears throat> yeah, market. Welcome back. What I've done here, <laughs> took my big two-inch brush and just missed it off with what was, what was already left up there. And that'll give you a nice illusion of depth. Now, let's get into some little trees. I'm going to grab this fan brush, trusty old fan brush, thin it out. Grab that sap green. Nice and dark. No need to mix it. In fact, I'm going to put a little bit of black in there. Just go ahead and mix it on the palette. <laughs> no pressure here. Again, if you don't want to have a tree line back there, it's very easy to accomplish. You just don't do it. Just drop that in there, all the way back like that. Now we're starting to get some perspective. Now we're starting to get a little depth here. Start poking some trees. I have the little guys way back there. They look small, but they're actually quite large. It's that we're very far away. And that's an illusion. You can see I extended down here a little bit. You'll see why I'm just mad. It's another one of the fun parts. Let's go ahead and add some trees all along there, wherever you want. You can push them up, you can push them down. This two inch brush will do just about anything you want. Oh, you don't believe me, huh, Jeremy? I can tell by the way to look. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm bad, man. You, you watched the show. No. <laughs> Stop and go back, and that we don't. We 
have <laughs> I'm getting tired of this. There we go. Now, all right, yeah, I'm ready. Mark this part where I'm going to start talking. As you can see, it's very easy with this tooth brush or this one fan brush just to push the fuck. All right, again, roll back. Yeah, okay, fan brush. There. Again, just putting them in there. This little guy, they don't have to be straight telephone pole material. In fact, there's not a lot of interesting features about a telephone pole. These guys have a more existence, more existence than just the future of being cut down. They're alive right now, and they're happy about it. I'm happy they're alive too. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm feeling better now. Let's just do some. Let's do some happy little bushes down here. If you're down, I recommend you paint a couple of happy little bushes somewhere. They always cheer me up. It's not just the way they look, it's uh, imagining all the little critters that live down in there. Just running around, having fun with each other, maybe having a party. 